probably lived like half my life god bless you know what i'm saying so you know even when i talk on tapes now like you know the things i say at 45 i wasn't saying at 20 and i'm like but i'm also thinking about like wow what i'm you know i'm 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 leaving behind or i'm i'm leaving a legacy oh, you can What's up, guys? I am Thomas Dopeziola, whatever you want to call me. Welcome back to the Dope As Usual podcast. I am here with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? Guys, this is the Dope As Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, drugs, problems, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today's a very special <laughs> guest. If you can't see Marty's <laughs> smile, today's the DJ drama episode. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you coming, man. Absolutely. Uh, if you can't tell by this man's smile, every... Uh, this is legendary. Yeah, yeah, this is season sure. three. Okay. Marty doesn't listen to music. Uh, what? That's certain. Not that's certain. He only yeah. listened to East Coast, right? He's like, oh, it's just, you know, it's the same loop. Uh, so we finally have someone here that Marty listens to every five seconds. Fire. Bro, he's a. Uh, well, I didn't this. realize. I didn't realize. I've been listening to the same playlist basically since 2005, damn okay. near. Early 2000s. Wild, actually. <laughs> Before Still. playlists existed. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I realized at the gym, like, damn. There's DJ drama in the back, like 80% of my playlist still That's that I listen to to this day. That's, I appreciate so thank that. thank you, man, no, Absolutely, that really says something. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. We're going to get started right away. Uh, Marty, why don't you bust that out? Yeah, okay. Yeah, All right, bust it. Shit. Uh, let's get started. Let's get started. Pause? No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, well, oh, gosh. last episode, we had the Russell. Last episode was the Bay episode. Gotcha. We had the Russell on here. Okay, extensive CD. Thomas brought about 10 mixtapes. Oh, I, I, I go, I like a underground, so gotcha. I was you. Yeah. Spending all my money from weed on CDs at, right. at Rasputin's. No. Rasputin's. Is that still out in no, the Bay? That was in the Bay, yeah. Is it still there? I have no idea. I started going to Streetlight. My cousin started managing Streetlight Records, okay. so I just went there forever. Got you. I remember it was going dope. Amoeba was signings in there. Amoeba, yep. Yeah. I was a kid, all though. That shit. Yeah. You know, we, we saw, because we been doing our research obviously and Got stuff you. and gangsta grills your brand yes we have over 150 plus gangsta grills uh, i'm like 250 like 250? 250 okay yeah, the, so like 250 okay yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, 250 yeah. Gangsta the, the, number, the numbers have gone up yeah. <laughs> yeah in many different ways out there in the world and i saw you rank your top projects which must be really hard to do because people will ask us to do that with our episodes yeah it's possible like, got you you know how many episodes do you have oh uh, was it season three we're at like one 20, oh yeah, so fifteen. Have you ever done it? Have you ever ranked? It's too hard, yeah. bro. Because it's too like, hard. how are you feeling in that moment? Like, well, right, that right, was right. dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the other time, well, we just talked about toys for yeah. thirty minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough yeah. to do. They're like your kids. Exactly. Yeah. They're all very special, but thankfully we don't have hundreds of kids. But, you know. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. Like, I want yeah. with eleven. <laughs> he just had his eleventh uh, child. I wonder if he can rank them. I don't think he would want to. And every time he sits sits down at my house, he falls asleep. One, yeah, I bet. Yeah, dude, you no have sleep. so many. They're all homeschooled, yeah. and they all play an instrument, a sport. Oh, that's dope, though. But it's like, dude, uh, it's all your, yeah. all of them. You gotta run it like that at that point. You gotta have a team. Yeah, pull Jackson so, five at that point. You got to eleven of them. Yeah. Uh, oh, put something quick. together. Do you smoke? Um, just to vape. You just vape? Yeah. Do you mind if we smoke? No, we'll get uh, get busy. All right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just want to make sure no, we do it here. because we I really smoked a few people out. I don't yeah. want to ruin their day. I mean, I, I do smoke, but I'm not a, I'm not a big smoker. And then like there's certain things I do like DJing, interviews, things like that. Like I rarely ever will I smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just like. I like to keep my composure. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask for. Nah, but I mean, by all means, get busy. Just blow smoke around you. Yeah. I, I, I'm assuming this is like a normal occurrence for the show. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah we uh, we smoke a lot of weed. Yeah. yeah. If you can't, well, don't judge me for this straw, this strawberry <laughs> ice I have over here. <laughs> it's all good, man. Hey, everybody smokes. Like it's a bad. Ha it's one of my few very bad habits. How, so. You used to smoke cigs. I never smoked cigarettes. I did smoke hookah, and then, but I've been smoking weed since I was like thirteen. But you know, I've given up some other narcotics, thankfully. So you know, I just I keep this as my like bad habit. So you get you? I used to. Yeah. I, mean, I do a lot of shrooms, though. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if oh, y'all broke out some chocolate bars right now, mm. I'd be all in. Damn. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. I have yeah, so I many shrooms in my house and oh, packages. Yeah. I'd have been all in. Yeah, During the episode too, I, I was for opening the box. Like for sure, I would have went. Douche rooms. I what? Uh, I, I just don't want to assume. Like, <laughs> you got, and, like here, cho their chocolates oh, and gummies oh, and I'd bears. Been, and... I'd have been ready to go. So how often? Are, part two. Part how two. How often yeah. is that part of your routine? Um, I went through a phase where I was I was doing sh shrooms daily. Like oh, like I would microdose. Yeah, microdose okay, and cool. take a bar. Maybe take like um. 
like uh, three three bars at a time, and then just during the day, I'll just by the end of the day, I've gotten through a whole bar. So um, I still do it. I mean, it's still a, a regular, like I'd say, daily or you know. Do you ever other day every other take day. mushrooms for the intent of like I'm gonna turn my phone off and I'm gonna leave Earth for a while? Now, I, in the past, I mean, when I used to do like the real shrooms, I've been there, and then um probably most recently um one morning i had a flight and i just i, I think i was like kind of like half sleep and i was kind of i guess i thought it was breakfast and i just like ate a whole bar so I, like my flight was like star trek so that was pretty ill but it was um, fun um, I don't know if fun would be the word. I, I don't like being around that many people. Nah, yeah, yeah, it was too intense. Especially like, in a capsule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, felt, and, I mean, thankfully, I had like a like a one of the bed seats, but oh, it was like out. it was just too much going on. Like I, I couldn't even focus. I I literally thought I was on Star Trek. It's but too um, much. but I, I I do like to just microdose during the day. It just makes everything feel like eventful. You know what I'm saying? Even in the studio, no, that's cool. I was like talking that. about it last night to my homie because when I eat mushrooms, I probably you know came to like four or five grams, but I'm like trying to. I'm trying to trip. It's not so often. Not so often. I haven't done that in a while. Like I, I should. I really want to like maybe go to the beach or something and like just take like mm. a whole bar. And like just bug out. A whole bar is what two grams, huh? Those yeah, chocolate bars. I think so. Yeah. yeah. See, my mom microdoses like every other morning now. Really? She's going hard with that. Wow. And she loves it. So I. That's see, dope. She's like, it just adds something. I'm like, it, okay. That's how I like to explain that's, it. Like, I mean, people are like, what is it like? It. And I'm like, it's just like. It just makes everything feel like an event. A little like, elevated. Yeah. Everything's a little more important. My, my my best friend, my business partner, Lake, he's he like smokes a lot. And like like I've I've never seen somebody like maintain and be able to like keep a composure and handle business to that extent. Like if I smoke I'll it'll like I can't wake up and smoke like I just my day oh. slows down like but I respect people who can smoke and still like maintain at a certain level of intellect you know what I'm saying for sure that's what I, I, I I'm i impressed by I think it's the the people used to play with packs a lot so you know I used to sell packs so I think that's why my I have one of the highest tolerances tolerance on earth yeah, your tolerance. for real like yeah. I do YouTube I do all the other videos that's what I do yeah and sometimes when mom was here yesterday, I smoked a hash rosin joint. She hit it once and was dying. Yeah. And I smoked it and we left and go, I'm really not high. That's crazy. It's like a six gram joint. I'm like, I'm high, but I'm I'm driving. That's crazy. Like, I'm fine. I just feel like it would be nice to get high and just wake up. Oh yeah, the weed. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened since I was fifteen years old. That's you know? Wild. It's like wild. closer to coffee, damn near. It's yeah, like, it is. This is part of my routine. I was like make like do a, meetings while I'm smoking bowls. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. It's just the uh mm -hmm. I think it's just the the, the certain people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Certain people like my mom takes yeah. microdoses. I'm not doing that. But but oh, so you you couldn't do that every day. I don't like, want to microdose every day because I feel like I run like six businesses. Yeah, interesting. You know, or yeah. wait, what today? What's today? Yeah. But for me, like, it wasn't even like I don't know. I don't even feel like my tolerance, even during times when I did smoke a lot, like, like my tolerance went up or anything. Like, I still would like if I smoke a backwood, like four or five hits in, I'm there. Like, if I smoke the whole backwood, I'm no matter what. I'm keep zoned, it there, bro. I'm that's the best. Out. That's the best balance of life. Out, yeah. I feel. What's up, guys? Taking a moment to talk about one of our sponsors, and this is Fume. Be smart, don't start, kick the habit, put it out before it puts you out. You've heard these phrases hundreds of times throughout your life, yet you still choose to have a bad habit. Our sponsor Fume's on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses natural plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habits for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to help you transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores filled with plants like cinnamon and mint for delicious natural flavor. Fume's new version 2 is snappy, high quality, and overall just looks really nice. With an adjustable airflow dial and magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume has made it extremely easy for you to do that. Fume's number one goal is to make switching easy and enjoyable. So head to tryfume.com and use code DAU to get 10% off the Journey Pack today. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version 2 Fume to help you kickstart your positive habits. So guys, that's tryfume.com, T-R-Y-F-U-M.com, and use our code at checkout, DAU, for 10 
10% off the journey pack today. This is a public service announcement. As you know, Manscaped has just introduced beard products, but they've gone even further, and here's the Weed Whacker 2.0. So the leaders in the below the waist hygiene products, Manscaped, is going up north to the beard products, guys. There are multiple items Manscaped just dropped. Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the balm, the scissors. But the new Weed Whacker 2.0 and the new beard line from Manscaped, they've cemented their spot as having the best hygiene tools for your hygiene toolbox. It's time for you to upgrade your game by going to manscaped.com slash YOLA for 20% off off and free shipping. Use code YOLA at checkout. It all starts with the new cordless electric beard hedger. The beard hedger is tough on hair, smooth on your face with a single stroke efficiency. One stroke at a time, Marty. This waterproof cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 cutting lengths with one dial. No more need for messy drawers with tons of little clips and extensions for your trimmer. So new for Manscaped, beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard balm to make sure you're staying healthy and you're not just dry after you shave. Plus right now it comes with three free gifts. That's a beard brush, comb, and scissors like we said last week to make you just feel a little more like Captain Hook. So get 20% off and free shave shipping with code YOLA. That's manscaped.com slash YOLA to get 20% off and free shipping with the world's best ball trimmers slash beard trimmers you can get. Always use the right tools for your tool. Manscaped. Marty, you want to bust those out real quick? Yeah, yeah. So let me, let me ease into this. Ease into this. Ranked, <laughs> you ranked in Double XL, I believe. Uh, dedication is your top gangster grills. If you had to choose, <sighs> I like, mean, it was between there. Dedication Two and like Trapper Die. I think those are always like the one and the two mm -hmm. that I go back and forth on. And it's like you've seen. I was thinking about it. Have you read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? Uh, yes. He interviewed 500 millionaires and tried to find a through line between all, like all their success. Mm -hmm. What was it? Late nights, late nighters. I mean, it's the whole book. Oh. But I was thinking about how similar it is with you that you've gotten to experience so many different artists yeah. and so many different facets. Like uh -huh. when you pick those top two, is that because like are they was like something different about those sessions or how they were in the booth or what? Uh, um, I think more of it because to be honest, as of recently, like I'm probably gonna start having to put. Tyler, the creator, call me if you get lost in those top. Um, obviously, it was Grammy Award winning, so that was a major portion of it as well as the genius of the project. But when I think about mixtapes, like the reason why I put dedication to in that space is because, like, to me, it's like it was when I came to like a culmination of like the perfect mixtape like when i think about like wayne and his prime and like what where he was lyrically and like bodying those records where i was as far as like my talk game or just like even little things that i did on the tape as far as like how i would like kind of like start off a song then cut it off then go to another song then come back to it or like putting a secret song on there like at the end and just like you know or even like the the, the skits of of him talking like how when i think about that tape and how it was put together it's like a flawless mixtape mm. to me um trap or die I feel like is somewhat of the blueprint of like what quality street music is what like a lot of what happened in trap music or you know because of trap or die why my career took an ascension and like why people wanted to do mixtapes with me period like because like the combination of me and Jeezy and what that tape was was like you know it was the street blueprint in a lot of ways so um you know I've done so many tapes since those that are are incredible bodies of work and like even when I go back and listen to it like you know like 20 or what was that oh five so almost 20 years later like obviously I've matured I've grown I've gotten better in so many ways with how I um attack projects but like when we talk about mixtapes and at a time and a space of what the mixtape game was like those two are just like top of the food chain mm -hmm. you know and those are the tapes that most people, whether I run into them or online or in interviews, those are the, the two that come up the most. Mm. Nice, man. And uh, people might not really understand when they hear the word DJ. Like when right. you curate an album, yeah. 
the role that you play in everything from start to finish that yeah. like is even way more than the artist a lot of the time I would imagine because you're doing the producers you're curating all the songs make putting the whole vision for that project together that's what makes it a Gangsta Grills absolutely um obviously for me I always like you know give the I like to say the artist is the main focus because it's 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 like being a director so it's like they're the star they're the actor it's it's scorsese directing mm -hmm. leonardo or or pacino or de niro or something um so you know i play the role into you know making sure like when it comes to production or when it comes to sequencing or the bells and the whistles or you know i work i, I work off the artists a lot of times so when i hear them you know say a certain thing or you know name a certain song something like that's going to be the direction i take and you know what i say on the project so um yeah i mean at the end of the day you know uh, the most what gangster grills is known for is 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 normally based around a particular artist but i play that like director role in a sense mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's less collaborative now and like with phones and everything the way it is versus like the actual mixtape era between you and the artist? Um, not ne not necessarily. I mean, because, you know, depending on what the who the artist is or, you know, the, how, like the time and the space, like there's been recent projects that I've done, like been in the studio with the artist. S Simba's tape I did with him um just recently like me me and uh g perico did mm -hmm. hot shot you know i was in the studio with dope. him working with tyler i was you know we did that whole thing together like my my portion so um a majority of the time like throughout ma uh, throughout the history of gangster grills like a lot of times like there'll be times when we'll be in the studio working on the music but then like when i go and do my my part I always like to be in my own space in my own zone. So that's been something that I've like, I've always, I've always done even from then to now for the most part. But there are some artists that, you know, have called upon or, you know, because of whatever circumstances I'm in there and, you know, I'm, I'm doing it right on the spot. So I like it both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. So, Pause, but y'all still haven't mm -hmm. broken out with y'all. So uh, I was looking yeah, at okay, okay, I was waiting yeah, for no, it. Uh, we, we, so we my top work, five, can, my personal. Out. Okay, I'm trying to break out my top five here. Okay, okay? just right. as a fan. Got so you. off top, is this an order or no order? This is in no particular order. Okay, Willie the Kid, mm. when you came out with the affiliates early mm. on, hit the mixtape scene heavy. Wow, that shit is still on my playlist. Mm. Out of Grand Rapids, that's the other point I wanted to make. Wow. While he's working with all these superstars, he's going and work to Detroit, into Grand Rapids, into Buffalo, into the littler markets. Even like G Perico now, like he's what I was always, always respected was not just going for the superstars, yep. but the artists who really like. Yeah. I mean, I think that's been like a highlight of what people respect and like why I am where I am in my career because you know a lot of my tapes or a lot of the artists I work with have been not all the time a listers at the point where I work with them. Like I've done so many tapes with so many people that have become superstars like when i did little baby's tape like it was early on in his career obviously like jeezy gangster girls was his first platform like you know i could go on for days with with artists that kind of like broke because of yo Gotti. like we did a tape super early on um there's not many people in music that there's like have broke or been a part of more artist careers i feel like that's a fact that's a fact i'm definitely one of those one of those guys and um and i think that's what you know as a dj i, I feel like that's you know part of a dj's responsibility in some senses like you know we're the medium between the music and the people mm. and then like as a mixtape dj like that was always my thing like just being addicted to the new shit so for me like being able to have an eye or an ear or like the vision for the talent and what's about to happen or like rest in peace nipsey like when we did crenshaw like that was a, a very turning point in nipsey's career like that you know that that's the project that you know and, and of course he had a fan base uh up to that that point 
uh, as well. But, you know, Crenshaw was a, a big project for Nip. So, you know, and being a part of that, like, I just, I just love being a part of, like, new movements and, like, new shit. And then, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, I tell artists all the time, even to this day, Sim, Sim is another one. Like, you know, he's, he's on the rise. And, like, when we did uh, Results Take Time, like, you know, as much as they love working with me or it's a an honor or, like, you know, a dream, a part of their bucket list to do a Gangster Grills, like, you know, the, the success of them at that space when we do that project just makes me look all the more mm -hmm. genius. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's Ron did it uh, again. Knew. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. He's got the eye. <laughs> so moving on for me, top like workout music, combination of an artist, <coughs> damn near in their prime with the right production. There is no competition. One. No, number one. Mm -hmm, for okay, me. Fabulous. Champ is here part three. Champions here three. Kiss. Yep. Damn near my favorite mixtape of all time. I'm so so glad who you shot you on there, Finally, right? Marty's What's up? Smarty That's one yeah, shot yeah. Right and just to clarify, which Willie the Kid tape? Uh, you, sing, sing, mama. Got you. Oh, all that shit. That was, um, yeah. what was that called? Divide and Conquer? That was the one with me and Big Mike, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Damn, anyway, is there anything behind those fat, the Fabulous and Jadakiss projects that a super fan might not know that might want to know about working with them? Um, hmm. So I always felt like uh there is no competition one was was somewhat of like a underappreciated tape it came at a time like after the quote infamous raid that um you know like i don't know if it got the attention that it deserved um on that tape um there's definitely like some jabs on this, some shots. I'm not gonna say toward two, but me and a certain artist were going through some things at the time. And, you know, I took a couple of shots on the tape. I, I remember just randomly naming it, there is no competition. And then, you know, I was just just recently talking to Fab about that and just like about the, the, the second one in the series, how he really got into mode. That's how he came up with Funeral Fab. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, it was almost like, there were three names for that. So it was like uh, Gangsta Grills. Then it was there was no competition. And then part two was like the funeral service yeah. because we were killing a competition. Uh -huh. um, so that was, a, that was a fun series. Yeah. Legendary. All-time greats. Four all-time great artists. Yeah. In my uh, opinion. The, the, the Jada Kiss, you know, when we did that, because, you know, I remember when, when Green and, and Kiss did the first Champ is Here, like, you know, I, I growing up, or like even you know in my early years of Gangsta Grills, like me and Cannon and Sense, like we were, we were the biggest Green Lantern fans. Like he was the Green Lantern, oh DJ God. Green Lantern, he, out of motherfucking upstate New York, right? Yeah, shot the Green. Like he was, he was the mixtape goat to us. Like between Green and Who Kid, like we we studied everything they did. So a lot of like even what how Gangsta Grills started or like how I approached it with the drops and just like just a lot of a lot of that really came from Green Lantern influence and inspiration so to be a part of the Champ is Here series um you know is is mm -hmm. like was it was legendary and a lot of people don't know that that's where the uh infamous who shot your freestyle that he performed at the verses uh comes from it came from that tape mm. Common knowledge to me. I don't know. Common I don't know knowledge that. to me. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Marty. All right. So I got two pieces of vinyl here I want to bust out. Just maybe see if you got some stories. Very near and dear to me. You guys put this together. Yeah. Straight out of Buffalo, New York, my hometown. Yep. Finding the BSF. Yep. Gangsta Grill Syndicate. C crazy. Came out three years ago, right? Yep. Benny, it's funny because Benny, um, <laughs> Benny and Gunn, have recently said like they don't get the credit for the gangster girls resurgence so right before we did this uh gun actually had me do an intro for uh one of the um hitler wears hermes projects mm -hmm. and then me and benny did this yeah we did it in 2020 like during COVID. so this was kind of ahead of the gangster girls resurgence 
curve in a sense like you know benny just put on like i'm i'm the one that got dj drama out of his executive bag into his gangster <laughs> Girls bag, and he's he's not wrong like you know he came to me to you know wanting to do this project as a gangster girls and um this is super you know to see this on vinyl is super fire so crazy right and yeah, you turn just, around and put him on the track with fab and jim jones and yeah, shit right yeah, after absolutely um i put him on the forever track uh with uh with Fab and Jim, and then you know that's that's that song is how I came up with my the title for my album. I'm really like that because in in Jim's bar, uh, he ends his bar with you know saying I'm really like mm -hmm. that, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a that's a that's fire, that's, yeah. a fire <laughs> that's the title for the album. There it is, right there, and this is dope. Like uh, it's over. Um, Cannon produced that. that was super mm -hmm. dope. We did a video for that. Yeah. Did you have any experiences with DJ Shea? Uh, I did. Yep. Um, he's a legend to me he put I did, I did music I came up in mixtapes he yeah. put me on the radio back in the day very special I was yeah, in the studio great, with him and shit great guy he was he was there while we was um, working on this you know he was at the video shoots he was you know super super dope dope dude always show love and you know just a genuine dude you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying so yeah and I, I had known him for, for some time even before this you know mm -hmm. just like even uh, going to Buffalo for gigs and stuff when did you first connect with Benny? When did I first connect with Benny? Um, I don't know. It's been some years, but um, I've known these I've known these guys for 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 a long time. Um, even through my connection with uh, uh, Willie the Kid, and they had a, a homeboy who uh, who did clothes. So like, Gun reminded me that like. He had he had been around. He had came to like my old studio that I had um, before I built Mean Street Studios. So you know we've been we've been crossing paths for for quite some time. So mm -hmm. I, I've known Benny for some years. That's sick. And just as a fan of music, I always appreciated that like putting on Buffalo and shit. Not even a Griselda piece, but one for the BSF piece for like, sure. Not yeah. a, you know I mean again you know Benny came to me and was like yo I want to you know showcase my team and I was like. Let's run it. Respect that. Sick. And then last one, you mentioned it already. We just had the Russell in here, and he's following the same model. So this still echoes on today. The Proud to Pay, most legendary, one of the most legendary, first $100 album of all time, innovative projects to come out, DJ, DJ Drama Presents. Uh, bro, I've show. never seen this. On vinyl? Never. It's a Do you, have, you don't have all your own projects on vinyl? Or I don't have this. Wow. This is crazy. Yeah, the photography, everything is just iconic about this project. You're talking about the hidden tracks. The, uh, the last track on this is Dan, You're My Favorite Song of All Time. And then it bleeds into two hidden tracks, which is Dan, You're One of My Favorite Tracks of All Time, too, like is, he was talking about. Am I on this vinyl? Do you know? I see it says DJ I don't Drama even own the turntable. I would assume so. Wow, this is crazy. See, I mean, I, this is why I have a big CD collection. This tangible shit, mm -hmm. need, I feel like yeah. you appreciate that more. Yeah. It's and you listen to the hard. project fully through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is so fire. Like, you listen to this. So, the way this came about was I was in L.A. randomly. Um, I used to be a, a Wakano. It was on 3rd Street. There was a Wakano on 3rd Street. Um, me and my uh, partner, Lake, went to go get some food there. I'm not sure if, if I think Dre Sinatra happened to be with us too. And I ran into Nip uh, in Wakano. Had known Nip for some years already. Um, Lake and Nip had a relationship too. And we just started chopping it up. We were just, you know, having convo. And I was like, yo, it, it feels like Tom. Like, what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo. He's like, it's crazy. I ran into you. I got this. I got this dope concept, and I think it would be the perfect time to do. Let's do the Gangsta Grills, and I was like, let's run it. And it turned into Crenshaw, you know, which which was a, a legendary project, you know, in so many ways. Like, you know, Nip came to Atlanta. We shot some videos. We, you know, we um we moved them around the city. Like we. We uh we, we set up some some pop ups for him. You know he, he came to our studio to Mean Streets. Um, he recorded the 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 Thug records that are on uh, I think on Mailbox Money. Um, he did those in Mean Streets and um, you know he even like Nip for a minute had a, a studio 
uh, that he basically got the concept for from coming to our studio to see because we you know the way we have our shit set up it's like a a, a full compound you you see like how Snoop's studio is Snoop as well got the idea to do his studio from when he came to my studio no shit. now his shit is next level like you know salute to dog for what he accomplished but you know um but yeah this this right here just came about you know us going to Wakano, running in the nip and here we have crenshaw you know one of my one of my favorites it's one a of my studio favorites. that you recorded your shit in remember it's like oh this is nipsey just sold yeah. it to us and then you based off your shit off of the way that was designed remember you're it's, like yo this shit looks tight i gotta design my bathroom like this remember you'd be all the neons and shit our friend took that studio over yeah this studio you're FBI talking about oh, really? oh the one i'm talking about yeah actually yeah yeah he took that studio over and yeah. uh that's fucking funny yeah that's crazy yeah i remember shooting the video for more or less we shot that in atlanta it seemed to me looking from the outside in like he really had a different relationship with his fans and a lot of uh rappers do in the sense that sure. he's like i could put they could download it for free or they could pay me a hundred dollars they're gonna pay it yeah. you know, nobody had ever nah, thought knew, that before he knew he was onto it like and nip. they were lined up around the corner to do it and then you know me and nip wound up going to Atlantic around the same time. Uh, Nip didn't announce that he had did a deal with Atlantic for some time. But like when I first got my A&R uh, job uh, coming back to Atlantic was right around the time after Crenshaw where he, you know, uh, quietly had did a, a partnership and a deal with them too and was, was in the building. So that was pretty dope. This is, this is classic. I got to give me mm -hmm. one of these. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get one of these. Fucking vinyls are so sick. Mm. All yeah. right, I want to switch it up real quick. Mm -hmm. Ready? Do you have any siblings? Did you grow up by yourself, or are you one of the, are you one of those kids where you're like, yo, I don't got no siblings. My parents buy me whatever the fuck I want. I have a sister. Um, older. Older sister. We have the same birthday. What? Uh, yeah, we're nine years apart oh, exactly. That sucks for her. I t <laughs> She's like, oh, the baby brother, the that's, baby's got the fucking birthday now. That's I how can she, only imagine. She. That's how she felt. Yeah. Yep. She wanted a bike and she got it. And they were like, oh, we didn't get you a bike, but we got you a little brother. And she, oh, I don't want a fucking little brother. I want a bike. Whack. But nine, she's too old to beat you up. My sister's three, two years older than me. She used to beat the shit out of me because of that. No, nah, she she used to put hands on me a little bit. Damn, yeah. nine years older? 18 beating up a nine-year-old? So she was nine. So, yeah, like when I was probably like four or five. Mm -hmm. but, so she was what, like... Uh, 14, 13. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, I, I, imagine that. I imagine that. Yeah. I got a couple smacks up, upside my head, but uh, I love it to death. You know, we we um, so we didn't grow up like she's not my. I'm my mom's only child. Um, so um, uh, my father has me and her. So we didn't like spend all of our years under the same household. Mm -hmm. Um, so like when I was with my mom, I. I grew up somewhat like an only child, but I wasn't a kid that like got anything I wanted. Like you know, I was, you know, I I got a Nintendo and I got a skateboard and Fuck yeah. I got a turntable and thankfully and a mixer. So, but then some of that was even me convincing my grandparents to to pitch in. Thirty million U.S. Americans are facing erectile dysfunction on the daily. Fellas, you sometimes need a little help in the bedroom. You get a little bit nervous. You need a little bit of help. We're here to save you. The doctors at RexMD will evaluate you online, and there's no need to go to a doctor's office. Real FDA-approved medications at the best price. This is what RexMD is here to help you with. RexMD makes getting generic and branded Viagra and Cialis easy online. The prescription included, delivered discreetly and directly to your door. No waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor's office, no insurance, no co-pays, just you and your ED medication. So take advantage of their best deal ever and it's up to 90% off. Also pay as little as $2 per doses with our exclusive link. So to take advantage of this limited time deal, go to rexmd.com forward slash dope. ED can mess up all kinds of relationships and things in life. We want to avoid that. RexMD is making it easy and simple with their online platform. With just a few clicks of a button, you're talking to a medical professional. You guys are putting together a plan. They're shipping your prescriptions to your door discreetly, directly to you within two days. Act now to take advantage of this deal by going to rexmd.com forward slash dope. Our exclusive deal will save you up to 90%, which means you could pay as little as $2 per dosage on generic Viagra versus $90. Starter packs of generic Viagra and Cialis are now available to our listeners to get started. Remember, that's rexmd.com forward slash dope. That's going to save you 90% off plus a free gift. And remember, your partner will thank you. So you 
See, I always want to know the roots of fools. Were you the kids sell, like reselling candy bars and shit, picking up cans, trying to make money? That was that I was what I was doing. It. Everything. Was that you? I was a hustler as a kid. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even at five or six type shit. Well, I remember like one of my first gigs was like a paper route. Um, I had to wake up like 5 a.m. in the morning and go on this paper route with this like kind of like this overweight white lady that worked lived in, in the neighborhood at the time. I didn't last long on that. Um, but, you know, I... I I didn't start really having jobs. I didn't start really working till like my teen years. Um, what was that first one though? My first job was, I think it was, I was working on South Street. Um, I got a gig on South Street in Philly, which is very well known. Um, and it was at, it was at a, this store called Inferno, which was like known for like, piercings and like kind of like rock and roll stuff but they opened up another side and they started selling like hip-hop gear and like graffiti caps and mixtapes and stuff like that and so they hired me to like work at the the front of that how so, old were you then uh maybe like uh 15 16 ah see that i remember that first like this yeah. is my job i'm basically a fucking adult <laughs> so i know you get that first feeling and you're basically an only child because she's so much older than you yeah, yeah, so yeah. i just want to like get the feel i always you know everybody mm -hmm. asks like so what was it like but i always don't want to ask like tell me about your childhood yeah Cause i feel like it's kind of generic like yo you got older sisters he beats shit out of you it's always a good icebreaker nah <laughs> nobody really that's not that's not a question i get asked a lot like, and that's why i wanted to ask like i wanted this to be different like what's something you don't hear yeah you're mm -hmm. gonna mean some childhood shit all yep. right so your first job you're at the piercing store yep. hip-hop store yep. um i read it online obviously but i wanted to ask you got into music before you even got there yeah well i i started like being a connoisseur of some sort yeah well i mean I went to go see the movie Juice, so that was what first inspired me to be a DJ, like, seeing that movie. But, you know, I was into music before that, obviously, like, you know, growing up just watching The Box and and uh, Rap City and, you know, TV raps and shit like that. And just my parents both had, like, record collections, so I used to play with their vinyl and stuff like that. What was is Juice, uh, uh, is Juice still one of your favorite movies of all time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just put my daughter onto it. She's fourteen. I like forced her to watch it. And she, like, oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, I gotta show you some some dope shit after the interview. <laughs> Top three movies yeah. of all time. All time. It doesn't have to be comedies because it's hard to put comedies in because you're like that's my favorite comedy, but you don't want to put in your top three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so I have like top three gangster flicks. Exactly. Got, top three movies that aren't comedies. Top three movies that, that are aren't not comedies. comedies. They could be funny, but they're not like comedies. So I'll go Goodfellas. I'll go Usual Suspects. Oh, good shit. And um, let me think. I'll go Juice for for you know the inspiration. But I'm a movie buff. I could do the show. Oh, all day. same right here. Yeah, I'm I like can, the cable guy in my head. Yeah, I could do the show. I got all the day, weird man. memory. Yeah, all, right. Like, all right, so I could go City of God. City of God's a good fucking movie, yeah, bro. Man. Even though I got to read subtitles, I'm like, yeah, I'm still stuck. Yeah, I'll like, watch it twice just to watch everything. Again. <laughs> yeah, that's a good fucking movie. Yeah, uh, City of God's crazy. Usual suspects, something people don't ever throw out there, man. Yeah. Well, another interesting tidbit is that. You know, at the end of every Gangster Grills, when I say and like that, we gone. Like that comes from like usual. That, gone. that comes from usual suspects. <laughs> oh, it was basically shit. crushed that fucking movie. Man. Yeah, so. I was like seven years old when I watched it, and when I watched his foot turn straight, I went. Yeah. I fucking ran around the room like there's no fucking way. Yeah, it was Bro, that, it blew it was shit. My mind, nah, it's man. one of my favorite movies. Me too. I got that shit on uh, no DVD. DVD. I don't think yeah, I have yeah. tape. That's where I got the and like that we gone from. No shit. That's nope. a good yeah. one. But yeah, I'm the same dude with movies. Like, yeah. my mom was kind of like on drugs. She's like, watch TV. I'm like, don't yeah. trip. I will. <laughs> so I watch TV for days Done. at a time. Yeah. So I, all those movies, all those old school shit. All right, you like old movies then? I like all movies. I mean, when you say old, how old are we talking? Like uh, World According to Garp Old with uh, Robin Williams. Um, I'm familiar. I, I, I've seen it, but it's been a while. But yeah, okay. like, definitely. All right. Yeah, nah, I go. I can go anywhere when it comes to film. Okay, all right. I just wanted. To I wanted before I. I thought I was gonna be a DJ, like I. My, and because my older sister was actually into film, so I. I wanted to be like a film director. Like I thought I was gonna like go to NYU Film School and, and really do film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I started off. I wanted. I was making little shorts. That's how I started at everything like ten years ago. I was making little shorts yeah, and making. Uh, 
it was just like repurposing scenes, but it was almost parody. And uh-huh. it was with toys and nugs, and I would think like Oh, that's fire. Ramble First Blood, uh you uh Reservoir Dogs when he cuts yeah. off Marvin Nash's ear. Crazy. But I bought little chairs, tied nugs to it, <laughs> took like scene Oh, pictures, a little small. Ketchup. Yeah, that's a little that's ketchup on the dope. ground. That's yeah. how I started off. Oh, I was like, I'm going to be a director or some shit. That's yeah. exactly what I said. That's to fire. Me. All right, cool, man. I like this direction. Yeah. All right, all right. So you guys wanted to, I don't know, throw um, some shit yeah. out. Maybe you haven't been asked, you know? <laughs> all right. Oh, so Truman Show. It's got to be my favorite movie ever. What's so ill about the Truman Show is like how like how it, ahead of its time it was and like where we are today in society, like like foreshadowing mm-hmm. us. Yeah, like the foreshadowing in that I never movie thought about that. is so impeccable. It's like you watch you watch movies like, yo, do y'all just really know and wanna just like Thank give you. us the hints? Like when Minority Report came out, I'm like, yo, are y'all just telling Saying us? It? Yeah, are y'all just showing us what we what we're getting used to? Yep. Like or like when I saw like um Ooh. Ready Player One. That and was be, a good movie. And I'd be bro. telling people like, yo, that like when I seen the metaverse that's come exact. out, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, that's what it's gonna be like. Like people just <laughs> living, yeah, living yeah. in a whole nother world inside this fuck these fucking goggles. So exactly what it like, is. Like when you think about movies, you think about that I think about that all the time. Like it's clearly like the Truman Show is is like so like that's the world we live in. Like it's right everything now. it's right now. It's accurate. Like, everyone lives their own fucking Truman mm-hmm. show. And I think the good afternoon, good evening, good night, and he leaves. I think that's what everybody's trying to do right now. Mm-hmm. And the world is fucking mm-hmm. up. And there's shit in the news. Yeah. There's balloons and this. Like, yo, yeah. what's really going on? Real Someone shit. found the door is what happened. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I think is going shit. on. No, so, it's Ill. All right. Yeah, I, I had to change that for my first, <laughs> my favorite movie. It was Forrest Gump, but I had I had to go. Forrest Gump was your favorite? Since oh, I was yeah. a kid, that was my favorite. And then mm-hmm. American Beauty was my other one. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, he, he really crushed it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, American, yeah. yeah. American Beauty was mm-hmm. good. It's a good fucking movie. Everybody already knows Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's yeah. his favorite movie of all time. Pulp Fiction, yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street's yeah. good. Hunter it was Parted. basically Goodfellas with Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio with the freeze frame. And then I was fucked. Mm-hmm. And then right. the freeze frame. Like, <laughs> and then I came up. Mm-hmm. I feel uh-huh. like it was the same movie, just gangster Wall Street dudes yeah. pulling legal shit. Yeah, when you illegal. said that, I couldn't like unsee it Remember afterwards. Remember I said yeah. it? was like, he is Ray Liotta. It's just... Ray Liotta, or Leonardo DiCaprio's Martin Scorsese and Ray Liotta knew uh, Robert De Niro because those guys are getting up there and obviously yeah. Ray Liotta's gone. Yeah, right I just feel like Leonardo DiCaprio's going to be Jack Nicholson in about 10 years. Huh. He's just going to be that cool motherfucker. Yeah, that you yeah, know yeah. Oh, no, he is. He, he is. He's, <laughs> he that, is, he's right? that guy. Yeah. For sure. We can, the Shining. Like. The shine, I got Jack Torrance on my wall. I got a lifelike toy. I got sick ass like sculpted toy of him in my house. Did, did you like the sequel? Um, I didn't watch it because I didn't want to get ruined, bro. You know, a lot of people didn't like it, but I feel like it had some ill, ill parts to You're it. Talking about where Andy's grown up, or uh, yeah, what's the name what's of his it? Name it's kind of a different name. Yeah, it's, like it's a different name. Something, something. It's the. It's not. Uh, it's not the dude from Star too. Wars. He's the guy now, yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. Damn, all right. He was the kid. <laughs> no movies, man. No, nah, he was the yeah, he was a little kid. He was yeah, growing he was the up, kid. And he still had the uh Do you remember the first fire starter? Of Drew course. Barrymore? Of course. Yeah, the new yeah. one sucked. I remember yeah, I remember going and see watching that shit all the time. Like, you know what I really want? I really, 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 really want someone to do. I really feel like it's time for them to make remake Back to the Future. Like oh. cause if you think it's so crazy when you think about it, like and Back to the Future came out eighty five, almost forty years ago, right? Eighty five, and then they went back to fifty five. So, like, if some, if we were to make, let's say, Back to the Future one, the new ones come out in like twenty twenty five. That means they would literally go back to ninety five. So imagine, like, in the movies, <laughs> ninety five feeling like how nineteen fifty five was to, to us mm-hmm. in eighty five, like. Sure it would would be. be dope as fire. It would be dope. You know what I was thinking the other day? Remember that show Celebrity Deathmatch? Of course. I think if they brought that back today, yeah, it'd be hard. people would lose their shit over that. That yeah. was a fun yeah, ass damn show. Yeah, I don't know why that fun. ever got canceled. Yeah, when, that like, was super I fun. Mean, I, can see why I mean, I can canceled. see why, but yeah. yeah but it was good <laughs> shit, man. And then we go comedies. What are we talking? We're talking Coming to America. Coming we, to America 2 was not bad. It was uh, not bad. It wasn't I one. had to give it a chance, and it I went, you didn't make me upset. Wesley Snipes was kind of funny. It didn't, it didn't kill me like Anchor Brother, like Anchorman Two. Anchorman Two was bad. Movie, uh, yeah, uh, Anchorman bad movie. One is a classic. Step Brothers. Step Brothers, of course. Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. I just recently watched. I didn't. I, I wasn't Bri- sure about. Oh, it. that shit's. Yeah, I wasn't sure, and I watched. I'm like, what was I waiting on? Legendary. I fucked up. Yeah. 
four year old virgin. Just watched that one mm-hmm. the other day. Yeah, I could do that one all the time. Oh, dude, I can. Uh, yeah, there's just lists and lists and lists. Um, what I was thinking about the other day, I think Austin Powers might have been one of the best trilogies ever. When I really I do it all three kid. times. Yeah, all three of them were funny mm-hmm. as shit. Hmm. Like, I fucked with Austin. You see Powers. the Dumb and Dumber's attempt. Yeah, yeah, Dumb and Dumber one. Yeah, that's yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. But no, the other ones were to get three were, best trilogy. I don't know. I might have to go to Star Wars. Star Wars. If we're talking tri- or Godfather. Godfather, Godfather, Godfather is probably the best trilogy. Like we're talking one, two, three. Back to the Future is good. Trilogy. Back to the Future is good. Star Wars is 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 good. And then the Damn. the three tri- like the fact that it's three trilogies is pretty intense and fuck. My brain's mm. going blank. I can't think of a really really good trilogy. There's right not that now. many. I mean, no, it's really it's yeah. truly not. Yeah, Godfather has to be the the big the best. So if you watch a lot of movies, I was thinking the other day. You ever seen American Me? Of course. I feel like American Me to Mexicans is what Italians means. Godfather means to Mex- Italians. Oh, huh, really? And then I think that Blood in Blood Out is what is the same feeling that Italians think when they watch Goodfellas, <laughs> uh-huh. like the street version, and then the right, corporate right, right, world right. takeover version. Right. Uh-huh. Still, mm-hmm. I was thinking that the other day. Like that has to be the the comparison. They're all good fucking uh-huh. movies, man. Yeah, classics. You know? Stand could, and deliver. You could do a whole breakdown on that shit. I could tell. It'd be fun yeah. as fuck. I watched this shit a hundred times. I love that movie. Yeah. All right, all right. Sorry. Well, enough of the movie talk. I just wanted to see. Yeah, you, you didn't nah, miss a beat, man. Yeah, not a, lot of, beat, not a lot of guests are really on that no, level. No, nobody is, bro. Ryan <laughs> Cowan, maybe. He was on a little bit. Yeah. But, nah, dude, no one's ever on the movie shit. Oh, and yeah. I feel like I can ju- not judge a person, but like, yo, you like that movie? Oh, you do? You want to hit this? What else you like? <laughs> that's, that's, that's how me and Jack Harlow, like, outside of music, when the first time he came, we met at Mean Street Studios, like, when we sat down and we chopped it up, he was like, what are you into? And I was like, man, I watch a lot of movies. And he was like, oh, where? He was like, I don't know if he asked me, like, tell me a movie you wouldn't think that I wouldn't know, or if he just asked me about movies. But I mentioned this movie to him called E2 Ma Tambien. And he like he couldn't believe that I was that DJ drama, Mr. Gangster Grills, was familiar with E2 uh, Ma Tambien and like blew him away. And he was like, "All right, I'm ready to sign." <laughs> Did that make you like him more though? Um, like what what drew you to him besides like oh you're I I can see why people he fuck just with you. He, I I just liked his energy his his vibe like you know he was very comfortable in his own skin even Which is coming rare. even coming in and is like like somewhat nerdy white kid that literally looked like Napoleon Dynamite at the time. But like, mm-hmm. you know, oh, like he, he came in looking like that and saying, I'm want to be one of the greatest rappers of all time. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's impressive. Like, and he had the bars to back it up. Mm. How long ago was that? 20, I met Jack in like 2017. And that's right when you were starting your label, right? Well, we had already started the label. We started Generation Now in 2015 when we signed Uzi, um, so yeah, so the label was already up and running, but we we Jack we 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 launched as a joint venture with Atlantic when we signed Jack. What's it like being with Lil Uzi Vert's career since so early on to where True. it's at now? He's a, he's the uh, the youths fucking they prayed to this fucking guy. I yeah. swear to God, bro, my little uh, every young I have so many younger brothers and sisters, a lot of them in high school, and uh-huh. it's like I don't I didn't know like the impact. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. fucking global. Yeah, he's like a goat to the to the kids. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, it's dope. I mean, again, somebody that I met super early on, like, shit, Uzi, was probably like what eighteen, nineteen, if we met him, um, and like, you know, he, the, the 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 guy that he is now, he he was then just with a lot less money, but like, <laughs> just super energetic, you know, like. Came came on my tour bus, cracked some jokes on my jeans, and like, I was like, yeah, I like this kid. Like, he he had he has it, you know. He he always he knew like I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be a rock star. Like he told us from day one, you know. He had a vision. Like he was very, you know, he was very tunnel vision in a lot of ways on on where he wanted to go with his career. And you know, thankfully, like myself, Cannon, and Lake, like we. We allowed and we gave him the shoulders to stand on to get there like a lot faster than you know i think he would have been regardless but like you know like 
uh, us being in his corner, you know, allowing him to be in Mean Street Studios where he was he was meeting his, you know, some of the some of his idols who became his peers that he looked up to, like meeting Thug earlier, meeting Wiz, you know, and going on tour and just like, you know, uh, uh, Lake really like putting together his uh, uh, his, his, his touring um you know layout from early on and and mastering that part of it in canon with with uh you know providing his sound and you know what they accomplished within the studio like it it's really dope to think back and you know think about those early years and and to look at where he is now like like wow like feel, you know it's it's a good feeling it feels very accomplished you have to be sometimes when you're by yourself like i fucking called it mm-hmm. you gotta at least go like I fucking knew it. Didn't I know it? Right. Like, you had to be like, damn, my fucking mm-hmm. brain sometimes. Because sometimes I'll say some shit like, it happened? Fuck yeah. It's Truman cr- Show. I think that. I, I, more, I do it more in public. Like, I told you so. Like, But behind closed doors, I'm more like, what the fuck am I going to do now? Mm. Like, I do that all the time. What do you, What's what do you next? Mean? Yeah. Like, fuck. Like, we just made an artist that went diamond like what do we do next oh shit we just had another superstar artist the fuck am i gonna do next oh fuck i just want a grammy what the fuck am i gonna do next it's all the pressure like, to keep it going i do i've done that my whole career like even after we made i made Trapper die i was like damn what the fuck am i gonna do now like and it's not even for the fa- it's more for yourself to not because I, I understand what you're saying because we make so much stuff and it's like I gotta top that again that's what that's how and I yeah. that's what I do behind closed doors yeah. like oh. I'm always challenging myself for like thinking like alright like all right, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do next? Yeah. You know to what impress saying? yourself, but it keeps coming. Yeah. Apparently, I mean, you've Boy, gone through so many different waves of music. Shit's incredible. I mean, like to and to still be here. We just did a TED talk and like yeah. we ended it off with, and it was about for like creative entrepreneurs yeah. how to make money through the internet and stuff like that. We ended it off with the one thing nobody can teach you is how to leverage your relationships, uh, and that's what it seems like. Key. Like you're a master black belt level person at doing that to keep. Like we were saying in the TED Talk, you don't always have to be the star of the show. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's really valuable to have these skills that serve other people. Mm-hmm. You can tap into their careers. Absolutely. And just keep it going. You don't, don't even, even verbatim what you don't even said. have a run. <laughs> yeah. You're just tapping into everybody's run and right. you add value to whoever you have a relationship with. Can I add value? So it's like exactly. there's That's Ill. not a lot of people out there that have withstood the test of time. Yeah and done that for so long and like leveraged so many different relationships. That's something I take pride in. I mean, like it's something early on in my career, I was like, you know, relevancy was, has always been very important to me. Like, okay, you got here, how do you stay here? So to have accomplished that and like, even at times when, you know, I mean, the game is, is a roller coaster. Like you have hot moments, you have cold moments, then you get hot and you might, you know, be lukewarm or then get hot again. So, you know, to be here in 2023, like, you know, probably the hottest I've ever been after 23 years in the game, like 30 years DJing, like it's it's quite the testament, you know. And a lot of it, like, when I think about it, it just comes from, like, the love and the passion and, like, you know, for me doing it for the for – the, the the genuine reasons you know what i mean like the money is great like the fame is dope like the the extra stuff that comes with it the traveling or you know being around beautiful women or like you know just the accolades like all that shit is 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 great to have but just the just the passion that like being a little kid who wanted to get my my name on a fucking flyer and like now to sit here and like have a legendary album with DJ Drama Presents and there's multiples of this. Like I have a Grammy in my house. Like that shit is like that's what keeps me going. Like, you know, like when I when it's all said and done, you know, and I'm at that point in my life where I've probably lived like half my life, God bless. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, even when I talk on tapes now, like you know, the things I say at 45, I wasn't saying at 20. And I'm like, 
but I'm also thinking about like, wow, what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving behind or I'm, I'm leaving a legacy of, mm -hmm. of things that, you know, hopefully 100, 150 years, 200 years from now, people will still be listening to and studying and talking about. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You, you articulated that well. That's how I feel. But I just want to leave some shit for people to go, that fool was hard. Yeah, and that's how mm -hmm. you live forever. You yep. know what I mean? Because it's like, you're not on there just talking. You're really explaining about the artist. That's the thing that like you really say it all stands the time, out like, to me. The shit that's missing now. It's like how Bruce Buffer brings out a fighter. Like The yeah. fighter's not going to sit there and tell yeah. you all about himself. Yeah. yeah, He needs a proper introduction to do right. his thing. Uh, Thank you. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I, that's how I feel. You know, and, and like even when I see like comments like i wish drama would shut the fuck up or like <laughs> what why is he talking mm -hmm. on the tapes i'm like yo listen like if i didn't add some type of value there's no way that this many artists or i would have been able to comp be talking over your favorite artist's music for this long long period of time if i wasn't saying something of substance and like you know i try to i try to approach it in that way where it's like mm -hmm. you know i'm adding value to the music like you know i'm an instrument in my in itself like with what with the words i speak like my shit just doesn't rhyme but i say from some very eloquent you know words mm -hmm. my shit just doesn't yeah. rhyme though i like that <laughs> do you freestyle that shit or is it pretty thought out um a little bit of both uh majority of it is freestyle for the most part where like i'll kind of just go in um, listen to the music and, and go off the head. But mm. every now and then, you know, I'll I'll make note of some certain things that I may want to say, or mm -hmm. you know, I find inspiration in, in various ways. Like like when I first did uh, Dream Chasers Two uh, with Meek, I was just randomly at an airport, uh, getting on a flight, and Time Magazine had this uh, cover cover edition about sleep and i i think i was high at the time and i was like "Ooh, i need to get that and like i literally read through this whole article about like the process of sleep and the things about you know dreaming and things like that so when i <laughs> when i'm on meek's tape and i'm like they say your brain's most creative in in, in your sleep sleeping. like i literally got that from mm. reading the time magazine so it comes it comes love from that. all different places. I love that. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Uh, before we wrap up, uh -huh. uh, there's just a little little segment we'll do. We'll run through it real quick. Uh, it's called "Who Are You in the '90s?" and I think it's perfect. I think it's a perfect episode mm -hmm. for it. So we'll just ask you two things, and you just pick one or the other. That's literally all it is. Ready for that? Yeah. Hold on. Before, oh, sorry. Before I forget, you ever seen that movie uh, "Things That Do in Denver When You're Dead"? I have. I don't really remember it, but I've definitely seen it. Okay. Yeah. Right, that was an ill movie. That was, a, that was a dope one. 90s flick. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who was in that? Was uh, Garcia, Andy Garcia? Andy Garcia. Uh, uh, Steve Buscemi. Oh, okay. Yep. Steve, Steve Buscemi's, Buscemi's in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good fucking movie. Yeah. All right. Run it. Who were you in the 90s? All right. So, from who you actually were in the 90s, from your perspective as you in the 90s, your yeah, preferences. Not, now. not any knowledge you know now. Like, who. What Think did you of like you, back 1995, then? What would you have said back then? VH1 or MTV? Um, well, that's a tough one. Because VH1 used to have some shit in the 90s, like before it became reality TV. Mm -hmm. But Yo MTV Raps was on MTV, so I would probably say MTV. More impactful. I yeah, think. For, I like from, that a, gave from VH1 their credit though. From a hip hop perspective, mm -hmm. but like VH1 used to like show that shit because behind they the music and shit. Oh yeah, behind the music was that on was VH1 rough. in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, behind, yeah, behind the music was fire. Uh -huh. But I'd probably go MTV. Tupac or Biggie? In the nineties, yeah. in the nineties, Biggie got a classic track from Biggie. Favorite? I mean, I remember the first time I heard "Dreams of Fucking R and B Bitch" like when it was still called that on a mixtape. Um, I remember the first time I heard Unbelievable on a mixtape. Um, you know, even the um, Biggie freestyling over the classic Death Row instrumentals, like mm -hmm. mm. obscure Biggie shit. Yeah. Like, yeah I was, you, Him I, and Tupac well, together live? Of course. Um, the, I remember there was a song with him and Tupac it was was it a heavy D song? 
but that was off a mixtape too it was a couple other people on there but they had a record together and then you know definitely like one more chance remix like summer 95 that shit was the soundtrack to to mm -hmm. philly like that's all you heard out of mm -hmm. every single car we could do a whole episode on philly rap too i go super deep with the state property and that whole yeah philly has some of the best rappers in the world yeah yeah we, we're, Being we're, everywhere most lyricists yeah our, our most lyricist city ever and even in podcasting now with million dollars worth of game yep. while i was helping out you know yep. tons of people in the industry and he's the only got us the ted talk actually oh that's what's up yeah he's only yeah, hooked us up with a great guy great friend um pennywise or chucky gotta go it you gotta it. say it tim remember tim curry's movie it yeah i didn't really like the movie that no, much I, that's just scary but the, the but i'm gonna go it only because if we talk in 90s we're talking stephen king and Stephen King is way more impactful than fucking Child's Play, like mm. just in general, mm -hmm. like all as bodies of work, movies and books. Like Stephen King is the goat. In the nineties, people don't even know. Like Stand by Me is a fucking Stand by Me is yeah, a great course. movie, and, and that whole grew that up came, to bang Mary Rebecca Romaine, and yeah. that story, the black kid. That story is <laughs> from Stephen King, like yeah, yeah, the, yeah the book. Yeah, the book. Almost everything is written by this fucking uh -huh. man. You just don't know it's an adaptation from his book. Wait, he grew up. Who grew up to remember the fat kid from, from yeah, yeah, Stand by Me? Yeah, he, that's uh, the actor from Tomcats. Big and, buff dude. Yeah, he's married to Rebecca Romaine. Oh shit! That Came pretty up. kid. That's yeah. the same Damn. fucking fat kid. So when I remember when I watched my dad, that's the fat kid they're picking on. They do that to me. Uh -huh. little fat kid, like you know who he is now. Like yeah. that's the guy from Tomcats. I got hope. Uh -huh. yeah. Damn, yeah. you're on your way. Yeah, got hope. All right, <laughs> go for it. In the '90s, Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan? Who you more into? Oh, that's a good one. In the '90s, I'd probably have to say Jordan. Because, you know, the 90s was a weird time for Mike Jackson. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, early 90s, he was still on top of the world. Like when, like, like when, 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 um, what? So I guess Bad came out late 80s, Dangerous mm -hmm. came out early 90s. So like, remember when like yeah. Black or White first premiered, mm -hmm. yeah. like the video on TV? I don't I remember, know. If, I remember it, watching that. After the Simpsons or the Super Bowl or oh, some man. shit, it came out. But then that. like, like, then like mid nineties, Mike started going through like a kind of a weird phase where it was kind of, you know, people were kind of like on the fence with him, a little on the fence with Mike. So Jordan pretty much dominated and ruled the nineties where he was like the goat of all goats during I'm the nineties. You had a great fucking yeah. memory. Like your memory yeah, sure. is down to the I'm, years I'm, and seasons and shit. Mm -hmm. I have a photographic memory. It's a blessing and a curse. It's, it's picture perfect. Mm -hmm. But I'm I can't good. remember the, mo the months. I'm like, good at years. I, I'm not. Like, like when it I comes think I was to like 16. When it comes to music and movies and shit like that, like uh, like things like no, Don. Yeah, I'm good. At, I remember years very. well. I just remember how old I was. And I got to do the math. Like I was seven when Space Jam came out. Uh, Ninety six. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I'm like boom. You know who's the king of that shit? It's fucking Tyler the Creator. Really? That good? Oh my god! Like that nigga will fucking tell you what page the Missy Elliott interview in herb magazine was <laughs> oh. like what like fucking what month what page like edition number like he's his brain is in, insane when it comes to shit like that that's kind of yeah. tight i mean and like uh, i said it helps bro it fucking helps and it sucks I can't. he'll remember track number six oh, on that's the fucking oh that's yeah. shit I got on the black street album yeah. that, that year. if you can see it i can remember everything out. but uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, I can't remember what the fucking page. I'm not That's Rain good man. when you're a I'm rapper, not, though. Yeah. You got to remember all your lyrics yeah. and shit. That's helpful. Yeah, he's like a he's like a music Rain Man. Mm -hmm. He's Dustin Hall. He mm -hmm. should be... Yeah, you know what? Just keep going. <laughs> Last one. Shit. In the 90s. Step by Step or Family Matters? Excuse me. Full House. Full House. Full House or Family Matters? Full House or Family Matters? Full House was big. Um, Family Matters. I'm going to probably say Full House... Only because Full House came out earlier in the 90s when I was still watching sitcoms. Um, I feel like I feel like Full Full House came before Family Matters. So by I the time think so. by the time Family Matters was on, I wasn't really watching television the same way. Like mm. so yeah, like Full House was 
Because Full House reminds me of like the Cheers, Family mm-hmm. Ties. Yeah. Still cheerful and upbeat like and that, shit. Yeah. Did you know Urkel wasn't the star of the show at first? I'm going to say this. Urkel has always been the star of the show. I don't give a fuck with anybody. But I'm saying. I'm going to go marry with children <laughs> over both <laughs> of them. Hey, okay. good shit. I just yeah. said the other day, uh, how a legendary would be Ed O'Neill on here. And I'd wear a no ma'am shirt right when he sat down. <laughs> That'd be fine. Like Kelly Bundy. <sighs> She's so uh, dope. I uh, I smoked a joint with Bud Bundy. Did I was, you? I was, on, I was in uh, West Hollywood. And I was uh, at my homie's shop. Bud. And he goes, Bud's a, uh, he's like, David's here. I go, David who? And I looked at him. I go, is that David Faustino on the yeah. fucking security camera? And he came <laughs> and hit my joy with me. That's There's fine. a picture of me, like, uh-huh. little kid. He's so little. So I'm like. Yeah. Like, I oh, dude, I, it was uh-huh. one of the best days of my life. I lost my shit. My homie <laughs> FaceTimed me with Eddie Winslow one time. Lost my, I'm the sitcom 90. That's my yeah, shit. Yeah. That's what it, my mom, mm-hmm. like, just sit here. I'll yeah. be back. <laughs> and that's what I did. I watched, I watched that shit, so. I get what you mean by Full uh, House. Yeah. Uh, the 90s is probably my favorite decade, just because those were my teen course. years. Those were my formative years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that was not on there, but uh, Fresh Prince, obviously. I love that fucking show. Mm. I don't know if you watched Fresh Prince Heavy. Duh. I watched Fresh Prince. All right. My videographer, my, my personal videographer is from Russia, Nikita. Uh. Shout out to Nikita. I said, you know, like Fresh Prince style. And he goes, what does that mean? So I didn't tell you this yet. I go, you know, like F- Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And he goes, what is this? And I go, Will Smith? He goes, oh, Will Smith, yeah. I go, Fresh Prince. He never heard of it. Mm. I go, you've never heard of Fresh Prince? And he's like, what is it about? And I started explaining to this man, I'm like, it's about a kid from Philadelphia, right? Mm. He goes to play basketball, and then he gets beat up. And his mom's like, oh, hell no. You're going to live with your uncle. Where? In Bella. And then I realized, this is the fucking theme You're song. I'm song. just fucking yeah. saying it. And I just played the theme song for him. I showed him. And when he was starting to get spun, uh-huh. Nikita, you know how so fucking sick. foreign Nikita is yeah. like, oh my God, he's getting beat up. Like, uh-huh. It's not for real, man. Uh-huh. Like, it's a sitcom. And he's like, this is Will Smith. And when he's done the head shake, and he goes, that's Will Smith. I go, yeah, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He thought he was just like a action hero. Are you going, Will, are you going Fresh Prince or are you going Martin? Oh, mm. Fresh Prince for me, man. Martin, which, uh, my ne- neighbor name was, uh, oh, fuck. Come on, Shanene. Uh-huh. They always called her Shanene when I lived in Fresno. Uh-huh. And I watched Martin with my mom, and I just thought it was the coolest thing that our neighbors was this, you know what I mean? Well, was this same My name fucking, is Martin Lawrence. His name's Martin so, Lawrence. Get out of here. Yeah. Martin Lawrence O'Neill, yeah. Oh, shit. So, but technically, I'm a Will Smith fan. Wow. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> if, we're, if we're being honest, yeah. His name literally is Martin Lawrence, which is fucking great. That's yeah. fire. <laughs> That's fire. His wife's uh-huh. name is April O'Neil. Yeah. By association. Ninja Turtles. Isn't that fucking Not ridiculous? the porn star. Yeah. Could you imagine going to TSA like, right, right. Martin Lawrence yeah. and April O'Neil? <laughs> right. Check your fucking bag. <laughs> right, right. What right. you got next? Right. <laughs> Instantly. For real. <coughs> All right. But yeah, I had to explain to Nikita what yeah. Fresh Prince was. It was fucking epic. I explained all American shit to him. I had to explain, anyway. don't film gangsters. When we were doing that vlog, uh, there's a big ass gang bangers. I'm like, oh, and Nikita, come over here. He goes, what? You want me to? F-? And bro, no, 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 they no, no, fucking, no, no, no. they got yeah. fucking pitched. And we racked up. <laughs> anyway, I like teaching them America shit. Um, One thing I want to touch on before we wrap up something that nobody that ever gets any shine in the rap industry, mixtape industry, but is super important. Which is the graphic artist, yeah. the cover art, yeah. which has changed the, the whole course of my life. Yeah. Mixtape art, yeah. Is in, is there like certain people you've worked with your whole career? Or are you constantly finding new people because it's such a big part of each project? It's changed over the years, but the guy who did the majority of my legendary covers is a guy by the name of Rob Petrozo. Um, his company at the time was called Lights Out. He has now gone on to do amazing things with so many corporations like Nike. I don't even know where to start. Like the the stuff that he does now, like in the world is like literally doing like commercial uh, things. But he started out doing mixtape designs and graphics. And, you know, he was he was a big part of my success because, you know, the covers were like the hook would, would capture people you know you when you saw the dedication cover like Iconic. you know he came up with that concept just like the the black and white and the drawing of it like to just to this day to watch the influence of that cover and to see like people recreate it or things of that nature like or like so many of the gangster girls covers like and he didn't just do my stuff like he did a lot of other people's mm-hmm. other djs stuff too um 
And then uh, later on, like there was uh, 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 Kid Eight, who who's actually from uh, the UK, who was I changed some of the the, the, the style and design of of mixtape covers, but but yeah, I mean, over the years I've worked with various people. I definitely, you know, Rob is like. Mm my guy like when it comes to the classics but yeah i mean they you're right that the, the the designers and the graphic designers those are like um untold heroes unsung heroes that don't get a lot of the credit that they they deserve that you know they they're the mm -hmm. ones that make these legendary covers that you know make us want to hang these up and this pieces of art yeah exactly mm -hmm. truly and like like i was saying earlier this is the best way to get tangible support the artist. I, th I feel like this is the best way you could possibly support an artist. You can always skip on Spotify, but I feel like mm -hmm. when you put something on, like yeah. you appreciate it, you sit down, you listen Especially to it. Especially like a piece of vinyl, because you're just like... It's it's fun. Yeah, you... Mm -hmm. you uh, it makes you, you feel like a kid, kind of, like collecting Yeah, of course. Shit. You put like, the needle on, and you just let it run, like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, just, I gotta get I gotta get a turntable just for these. I just Hell got, yeah. I just got yeah. mine ordered. This is fire. I'm gonna have to order one of these. Well, yeah, tell me, yeah. tell me if I got it's, a good it's deal. It's interesting that he made it in red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Well, I mean, you never heard, he yeah, did yeah. an interview about that, and he just said, did he? He's like, red is just in marketing. It's like, why is the color of a stop sign red? Because gotcha. it attracts attention. Attracts attention. Smart. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Even thinking about it, that he made the Crenshaw cover red, like you would crossing think, boundaries and you would, shit. you would think it, it would have been blue yeah because i remember when we did i don't remember if it was on purpose or if he asked but like when we first did jeezy streets is watching it was all blue um so yeah interesting yeah i think it makes it more interesting that he did it all like fire engine red and shit <laughs> <laughs> fire it's like shout out to g perico too you know he has his, his uh line out mm -hmm. right now called this is a, a blue t-shirt and he has like it's called this is a blue t-shirt it's called yeah, this yeah. is a blue t-shirt but it'll be like a Any red t-shirt uh -huh. like a a, a white t-shirt or a cream t-shirt like say, some liar liar shit this, this is, pen a, is blue this is a yeah, blue yeah. t-shirt yeah. <laughs> yeah like uh this is the where i'm from i'm from the Central California, but I was trying to explain mm -hmm. to my homie the other day because he's from Florida. Like I can't, you're not wear, allowed to wear blue or red to school. Like you can't wear numbers or mm. or, or teams of any kind. Wear hats. That they're not allowed to unless they have the school logo. Mm. That's yeah. it. Uh -huh. That's how I grew up. So I like. Then the you can day, wear no blue or red to school. No, so I have red shoes on today. It feels so fucking weird. <laughs> like I remember, I told you I wore them the yeah. other day. I'm like, this is the first time I wore colors in my fucking life. I can't imagine. That's so crazy, <laughs> having to go to school and not being able to wear blue or red. Just wear black all day, black, mm -hmm. and then Green Bay Packer jersey. That's the only. It was like a change. statement when you got your car that was blue. Oh yeah, blue. I wrapped my car blue, and I but I never drove back home, back up north. I'm like, I'm gonna get mm. right off the freeway. I'm gonna get fucked with. Something's gonna happen. Like this is not worth it. I'd rather just. Rent a uh -huh. car, so I just rented a fucking car all the time. So I'm just trying to like think of like the, you fucking, know what I mean, the colors. Fucking and California, shit. It's crazy. Just nah. like, oh, it's crazy, bro. I'll just fuck the color scheme. Up. Listen to the way I talk. People have hit me up like, "Hey, where are you from?" I'm like, dude, I'm wearing Vans, bro. Come on, man. I'm smoking weed, but it's just where you're from, and it just happens. So when you guys are talking about, it, I'm like, fuck, dude. Imagine we're living in here. Mm, yeah, that's a whole different story from where yeah. I live. You know what I mean, or right. I'm from. Wasn't like that in Buffalo. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's yeah. fucking snow. Nah. It's just yeah, snow exactly. and fucking heartache and shit. But this this whole shit, like, I didn't realize until like really researching for this interview, like, my whole path has been built around the mixtape. Huh. I yeah, didn't realize that. Time, bro. Like, <laughs> you you'll all appreciate the time. this. In 2005, yeah, I started recording. I started to just rap my ass off. Once I was playing college basketball, stopped, started okay. rapping and shit. Uh -huh. Started the basement, started getting in studios. Decided I'm gonna put out a mixtape. <laughs> Okay. So I connected with this dude out of Brooklyn, okay. Jailbreak Records, probably never heard of him. Uh -huh. Got 5,000 mixtapes for $5,000. Wow. Meaning I went out and took a loan out of the bank, uh -huh. 5,000 cash money orders uh -huh. at the gas station, sent it down to Brooklyn. We drove down there in my dad's station wagon, picked up 5,000 CDs, the inserts, the discs, the yep. cases, and he had Capone hosted. Capone Noriega hosted oh, my shit. Wow. So now imagine... We popped that shit back. I hadn't even heard it. 20 tracks. I sent it to him. Capone hosted the whole shit. He did the artwork. I'm driving back. They brought in the CNN, Capone and Noriega, the instrumental. He just comes on. 
Buffalo WBLK. You know I mean? I'm co-signing this shit. So the, <laughs> me and my boys are driving back to Buffalo, listening to this shit for the first time. It was iconic. Super hype. Yeah, we came back, took him into record theater, took him into all the corner stores, got him all off. He got him all off. And then just started dropping mixtapes. But story. I started doing the covers. Yeah. And then I built a business. You started like designing the covers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I ended up building a business called Drastic Graphics. Okay. So after a bunch of years, I built that. Then I got a deal with DJ Ski. He uh -huh. signed me to like a record deal and I okay. moved out here. But then I started doing basically somewhat similar to what you did. I got out here. Yeah. DJ Ski became a TV host, basically. Yep. The uh -huh. studio got moved out of the ski lodge like uh -huh. a week after I moved here and shit. So then I linked up with a bunch of really big comedians and I started playing that role behind the scenes uh, for a lot of comedians and podcasters. Huh. And then I kind of put the music on hold, but then we came back and we started this podcast and then yeah, all the fans wanted it, so I came it's back. It's so fucking wild. You talk about <laughs> <a> TikTok <laughs> story. This is like say, really, mixed tape. I was just like a mixtape. That was my thing. That was like, shit, you know, yeah. yeah. it was a real yeah. way for somebody, because I knew I could hustle harder. Before like the internet was so there, this yeah. was like early MySpace, I'm like, I can outwork everybody. Yeah. No problem. It's through these mixtapes. So when you got the 5,000, were they already put together? No. Uh, no, me yeah, and my boys had to do had it. had to do it. Yeah, I had to do that too. I would have to put the inserts in. and You got CDs just the discs, in. just the inserts. Right. Fill up the whole fucking yeah. car. Yeah, you would get the, <laughs> you get the, 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 what is it, the spool of the CDs uh -huh. and then the cases and then the covers. And you have to yeah. put the cover in, CD. I mean, I got to a p point where I had interns who used to do of all course. that shit, but i definitely started out doing that mm -hmm. shit myself but like at the ted talk we try to tell people like all these skills playing this kind of role people don't really ever you don't they don't tell they you this in college to, like artists, think about it like that art but like having these kind they of don't like, see skills, that. they don't see that legwork like they don't see the 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 the, the the hustle and the grind that goes into like the early year the formative years of like what it takes to be where we're at you know what i'm saying they so and that's 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 part of the you know that's part of the journey like you know I, I i some people are lucky to be able to skip those steps i'm thankful enough yeah. that i went through the all stairs yeah. i went through all exactly. that like, mm -hmm. i've been through all every phase of it to see it i you think know you saying? appreciate it because when people right? understand yeah. that that inspires them even more For sure and, and then when you keep leveling up they notice yeah, that and it right. makes them want to yeah absolutely. of course of course um uh, before we get out of here, where can everybody find you at? Um, Music, it, uh, online, so social media. My new album, I'm really like that. Is uh, it next week, because this comes out uh, on Monday, so it'll be what, like eight days later? The 31st, 31st. yep. So wow. you know, that'll be available on all days. March DSPs. 31st, four year anniversary of his death, too. It's, you know, kind of picked the. Uh, uh, um, a date that you know has some significance that we we lost a legend you know what i'm saying so and the legend is on my album um so we're definitely going to celebrate he's got a verse from him. celebrate him um uh, on, on that 331 and, yeah 331 and then um you know I, I got a multitude of projects that are out now that are coming out you know definitely uh look for 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 any anything with dj drama you can probably Roll your window down at any hood. Somebody's <laughs> probably blasting the Gangsta Grills. Uh, Generation Now, um, compilations on the way. Uh, Little Uzi Vert, new album. New music from Jack Harlow. Uh, we Sunny Digital, new project come in. Uh, uh, Car Carvina, uh, our female R&B artist. And then we're, we're looking to sign a, a whole bunch of new uh, artists coming up soon, too. So that's your what's next. <laughs> God damn. Got a lot of things in the world. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you're saying oh, I got a podcast coming out soon. Oh shit, what's it called? Um DJ Drama's Gangster Girls Podcast. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Weekly? Yeah. Like, Weekly? Um I don't want to give too many details, yeah. but it's definitely gonna be special. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be special. So I got a lot of a lot of fun, good things in the works. Nice, man. Of course. Always. Let's Let's go. Go. Uh, Thank Spotify, you. YouTube, everything, DJ Drama. There we is. Good shit. So three thirty one. Everybody, go check that out. It's gonna drop on. I'm saying. Everywhere. I'm assuming every yeah, platform. It'll be, it'll be everywhere. Every streaming platform. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good shit, man. This was fun. Thank you for being Absolutely, here. Man. This is chill. Nah, I appreciate it. I'm uh, I'm happy to talk movies with somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm always saying shit. <laughs> It was Dustin Hall. Nobody man. ever knows your references and shit. And shit. Yeah. My mom. Yeah. My mom gets them. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, man. So I appreciate you. Thank nah, you very much for, for being here. Appreciate, appreciate you. you. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Guys, this has been the Dope as Usual podcast for Marty from DJ Drama and I. Have a dope ass day. Love. Thanks for watching the podcast. If you thought this was dope, you'll like this episode too. And don't forget, the best way to support the show, tell a homie.